everyone a very warm welcome to a brand new series Business Today's CEO Immersives. I'm Devina Lasson. On this unique series, we're going to bring you up close and personal conversations with leading CEOs from around the world. We'll fetch you industry insights and of course personal anecdotes from India's business parents. Today, Saurav Majumdar, editor Business Today and Anand Adhikari, managing editor Business Today, will deep dive into the topic of private capex with Amish Mehta the Managing Director and CEO at Crystal. They'll help us understand why for over a decade, private capital expenditure has been stagnant and low, the way forward and much more. Take a look. Mr. Mehta, thank you very much uh, for speaking to Business Today. Uh, we'll jump straight uh, into the first question. Um, there is a lot of conversation now happening about the lack uh, of private capex in the economy. What is holding private capital expenditure back? Uh, so if you look at uh, the last few years, uh, sort of, I think uh, clearly private capex has lagged you know, the government capex. And investments have been driven by both central government and state government. A key reason for private capex lagging has been the capacity utilization. Across sectors, we have seen capacity utilizations below uh, what would trigger new investments coming in. Uh, other than for maybe sectors like steel and cement, where we have seen you know between 75, 80 to maybe 70, 75 percent in uh, utilization, most other segments have been below 65 percent capacity utilization, and that's been a reason why you have not seen private investment you know pick up in the last few years. But it's likely to change with the PLI and, and some of the schemes announced by the government and the demand and consumption pickup happening in the economy. We expect the private capex to actually start seeing momentum and going forward. And was there a case of global, uh, you know, over capacity in some sectors? I mean that. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, the and then if you look at the global commodity prices, you know, that shows that you know there has been some imbalance over the last you know many years, uh, and supply chain disruptions which have actually enabled prices to move up. Uh, Indian capacity is to be utilized with exports picking up in some of the segments. Uh, we are seeing new capex in regulated segments like oil and gas on, uh, you know, in the in the green segment because that's where you know regulations are driving new capex in. So those are the segments which are getting driven globally. But you know, cement, steel, uh, green, I think these are segments where we have seen capex pick up. And with PLI coming in, you should see some of the other segments as well. You know, where demand should pick up, pharma, chemicals. I think these are some segments where we are seeing demand pick up. Talking of PLI, uh, Mr. Mehta, you really seem to feel that uh, PLI will be a big differentiator in terms of bringing back uh, capex and uh, demand and therefore capex. So our sense is that uh, we should see private capex become one and a half times of the trend that we have seen in the last few years, primarily driven by PLI. And I think uh, you know that should augur well for the economy, uh, you know, for private sector uh, because it's targeted. I think it it helps you know drive revenue growth because it is linked to growth in revenue. And I think it is targeted to certain segments, whether it is import substitution, whether it is to, you know, bring in uh, strategic investment to drive towards green. So I think we are looking at PLI being a growth driver from an in capex and an investment for private sector, which would augur well for the economy. The the budget has of course uh, made a big bet on uh, government expenditure as the actually as the trigger to bring in more uh, uh, private expenditure on the capex side. 35% uh, uh, increase in the capex uh, government capex this time. But do you really feel that that could be a major trigger uh, going forward? So, sort of, I would say if you look at the last few years, government capex has been the mainstay for capex for the economy, right? True. Driving investments, and if you see that as a trend is continuing. The government understands its role. I think it's continuing the investments on roads, on highways, it's focus on railways, on ports. So infrastructure as a key segment, right, for government to really keep investing on, uh, I think that is going to continue. So if you look at segments like cement and steel, right, the demand is from infrastructure. And I mentioned to you that cement and steel has done well for the economy. Right. We have seen capacity utilization in both these segments of upwards of 70%. Right. I think uh, clearly you are seeing infrastructure pick up, boost demand for some of the commodities which go into infrastructure. Right. And with you know better employment for some of these segments, you are also going to see demand pick up happening. So I think infrastructure spend will boost, will help drive you know investment, will help drive GDP growth as an economy. 
and i think it augurs well for the uh, for the for the country but do we have enough projects like 7.5 lakh crore i mean it's a huge amount i mean do you have the capacity i mean to so i think it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a good question to ask right i mean uh, how much is enough right india keeps talking about infrastructure and and the momentum to infrastructure just look at what has happened on roads and highways right you have created a enabling structure you have you've gone to the ham so we used to have challenge on credit for you know the contractors so we have we have evolved as a country we have looked at different models we have brought in a model where uh, the risks are now you know pretty well mitigated uh, you are able to monetize projects so you are able to actually take the project complete the project make sure that you are able to monetize the project so that you know you are able to create a momentum in the ecosystem but i would say the sense of urgency the sense of action is something which the government is cognizant of and we have seen a lot of traction in these areas uh, question is how much is enough and and what more is required uh, uh, mr mehta the other point which we keep talking about is uh, the inability of some of the segments some of the ministries to spend some of the departments last year there was a problem of not enough spending because of covid and all of that but there is also a genuine problem of not being able to spend the government is leveraging the experience i think they are making changes right as a, as a, as as a if you say a project management office to really see how they can kick start the economy i think they have in this budget they have they have uh, i think carved out 1 lakh crore for states to be able to invest right. on the infrastructure i think uh, you know with invits coming in you know different financing methods coming in uh, global players wanting to invest in the high, in the projects in india i think you are going to see infrastructure you know pick up accelerate uh challenges on implementation as for a country like india is not going away it is going to be there i think it's the intent of the government i think there is a lot which is being thought thought about spoken about key is going to be how do you convert that into action i i just wanted to come in there since you spoke about nmp what what are your thoughts on a uh, asset monetization and b uh, disinvestment so uh you know i i, I must admit that you know i feel Uh, hugely optimistic and i and i'll give you some reasons for that right i mean air india we know as a country we have been trying to you know do a transaction for air india for couple of decades now right we have been talking about it but the way the transaction was completed the transition has been seamless right the way i think the handing over has happened uh, i wouldn't have imagined such a transition for a for a for a public sector unit right uh and it it to me it says that there is intent uh there is clear action right there is commitment from the government and i think the success of air india i'm hoping will get replicated for many other transactions to come uh and and you know i'm 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 optimistic you know as a, as a uh, you know as as a corporate citizen uh you know as 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 a, you know citizen of the country and also as crisel when i look at and i speak to different stakeholders i think uh, there is clear buoyancy and optimism from investors to look at you know how can we take a part of the program which the government is looking at so i would say yes it is taking time uh, all of us feel impatient but i think these programs you know we need to be patient and i think we need to see what how we can support the entire agenda and sir there is also a huge debate of uh, you know on this uh, crowding in and crowding out of uh, you know private sector investment because of huge capex and also a huge borrowing i mean which side of the debate are you in So actually, uh, you know, if you look at the current environment, there has been huge deleveraging. Uh, you know, and and I, sp- I I would say that if you look at the credit ratio that you know we have published a few days back, uh, the number of upgrades so it's more than five. So our credit ratio is more than five, which means there are more upgrades than downgrades that has that has got published, right? This is an all-time you know high I would say over the last many years that we have been publishing credit ratio. Uh, clearly, large congl- conglomerates, uh, large companies, or companies which are market leaders, the number two, number three players. i think they are in such good position that today if they had to invest they have the ability to invest they are holding cash reserves uh, they have the ability to borrow if they want to put up new plants right add capacities so i would say today from a capex perspective some of the large companies are very well positioned if you look at banks and nbfcs again very well positioned to drive credit growth and will this new capex cycle will be any different from the previous cycles i mean as and when we'll have Yeah. I mean I I am hoping that it is going to be uh, you know structurally well thought through right I mean I think uh, some of the challenges in the past where we have seen unrelated capex being done by corporates right I am I am I am hoping that corporates have learned right from from their past lessons I am hoping that banks and nbfcs uh, will be much more thoughtful when they are lending uh, 
And at what level of capacity utilization they will start investing? I mean, will it be 80 percent, 90 percent? I would say different sectors are going to be different. To be very honest, depending on the on the cycle of investment required, uh, you are going to see you know and and the amount of capex required. Uh, the thought process will be very different, right? Because you also need to look at global cycles. Uh, you know, you had many challenges in the past few years where you have seen ups and downs, and I think that becomes tricky for you know for for corporates to make an investment or to make a decision. Uh, you know, for leaders to decide whether to invest money or not. I think we need to have sustainable visibility on on the roadmap going forward. Technology interventions, uh, disruptions, and also green. So I think movement towards green and regulatory requirements is going to drive capex. So it's just not about capacity utilization. Uh, we have seen that in some segments. I think that will continue to be a trend. In 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 some, uh, uh, Mr. Mehta, I mean, while your optimism is well taken, what do you think are the key challenges? I mean, we have a complete uh, geopolitical crisis uh, which has unfolded, inflation, uh, commodity prices, all of that. I mean, we've sp people have spoken about it at Crystal. How do you view all the, all of that, and what do you think are the key challenges for the economy now? I think uh, clearly inflation is a very important monetable at, as we speak. Uh, also, I think you know the uh, the the fiscal situation of the country, right? How the government is going to manage uh, the 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 requirements of funding because of high crude prices, right? Uh, maybe the borrowings, if they are likely to increase, how they are going to manage the borrowing? How they are going to manage the the interest cost if the interest is likely to move up? Because we are seeing pressure on interest. Uh, Fed has already started moving. They have already started announcing that they are going to hike multiple interest rates. And of course, the uncertainty of another wave of pandemic, right? I mean, what does it do? So if there is demand impact or consumption impact because of another wave of pandemic, I think these are going to be challenges for the country to monitor in the short run. Uh, I would say in the long run, like we discussed, there are large investments happening on infrastructure. Execution of those projects are going to be a key monetable, goes without saying, because if you are not able to invest, you can't kickstart the economy. And higher inflation will impact the consumption, so will it delay the uh, capex cycle then? I, mean. I would say at the, uh, you know, the, the uh, lower end of the spectrum for MSMEs, uh, for the self-employed, right, for the, maybe for the urban uh, poor, uh, I think these are segments which are vulnerable, right. I think they have got impacted over the last two years. Uh, the contact based industries, the services segment, I think they have been you know, badly impacted with, with what has happened, right? They have not been able to come back as fast, as strong as the larger companies have been able to. Uh, and clearly, I think there we are seeing, going to see an impact on demand and consumption in those segments. Finally, uh, uh, Mr. Mehta, slightly, uh, you know, you have your eye on the economy, you have your eye on the corporate balance sheets at all times. How does one, somebody like you, uh, sort of wind down? How do, you, how do you uh, take your eye off for, for a little while and do something which is uh, away from boardrooms, away from corporate balance sheets? What do you do to relax? So I travel. Uh, I enjoy traveling. I, I enjoy traveling. I mean, and now traveling is back. So yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I have been making the most of it. You know, in the last few months, I would say I've made. Uh, I'm making trips, right, okay. and and taking some time off with family and friends. Uh, of course, I spend time with family, and I, and I'm a huge movie buff. Uh, you know, I want to I want to witness the culture. You know, through the medium of movies, and that's something which I enjoy. And how often you travel, and any favorite travel destination? Uh, I think for me, I think, uh, you know, Disneyland is my favorite destination. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's very close to my heart uh, and, and, you know, I've spent time there with family and, uh, you know, really had some best moments of my life, uh, real some thoughts which I can always cherish. So, despite know? all the data and the hard numbers, there is a dreamer <laughs> lurking somewhere within. I would, I would, I would say, you know, if, if I, there's one place where I want to be, it's Disneyland. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much, uh, Mr. Mehta. It was a wonderful conversation. Look forward to having a chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.